Good morning. Welcome to those gathered inside this sanctuary here as well, and uh, welcome to those who are joining us via uh, our live stream here. Good to have all of you with us today as our celebration of the birth of our Savior continues. That is a reality that, uh, that continues. Uh, Christmas is not just a day, uh, it's a reality that continues for us as we celebrate the, the blessings of our Lord. And this morning, especially the Word of God reminds us of the importance of, of God keeping His promises to us. Uh, so that will be the focus of our worship. So let's join together in our opening hymn. It's hymn 36, A Great and Mighty Wonder. So God be with all of you and, and bless you through His Word today. Please stand. To guide our worship today, we follow the order of service on page 45 in the front part of your hymnal, a service entitled Morning Praise or the Matins Order of Service. Uh, we continue with the sung responses toward the bottom of the page. Mm -hmm. O oh Lord, open my lips. Hasten to save me, O God. O Lord, come quickly to help me. Unto us the Christ is 
is born, let us worship Him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into His presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to Him of praise for the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods the deep places of the earth are in His hand and the heights of the hills are also His the sea is His for He made and his hand formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Let us pray. Almighty God, in mercy you sent your one and only Son to take upon himself our human nature. By his gracious coming, deliver us from the corruption of our sin and transform us into the likeness of his glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated. Don't forget. You know, we, re we need reminders like that, don't we? Because, you know, human beings can be forgetful people. Uh, so we do things like we make lists of things, of uh, things we need to do or things we need to get. Uh, we do all kinds of different things so that we, we don't forget. It must have seemed to the believers in the Old Testament that perhaps, perhaps God had forgotten them. Perhaps God had forgotten that uh, promise that he had made uh, to Adam and Eve about the one who was going to come, that descendant of the woman who is going to crush Satan's head and break the power of sin. But God did not forget, and that's what our celebration at Christmas is all about. And our scripture readings today remind us of God's faithfulness to his promises. Our Old Testament lesson is recorded for us by the prophet Isaiah. This is chapter 63, starting here at verse 7, where Isaiah reviews the history of God's faithfulness. In spite of, of people's uh, so often faithlessness, God is always faithful to his promises. Uh, by the way, the scripture lessons are printed on page eight of the bulletin uh, if you'd like to follow along there. The Lord's prophet Isaiah writes this. I will tell of the kindnesses of the Lord, the deeds for which he is to be praised, according to all the Lord has done for us. Yes, the many good things he has done for the house of Israel, according to his compassion and his many kindnesses. He said, surely they are my people, sons who will not be false to me. And so he became their savior. In all their distress, he too was distressed. And the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and mercy, he redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. Yet 
they rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. So he turned and became their enemy, and he himself fought against them. Then his people recalled the days of old, the days of Moses and his people. Where is he who brought them through the sea with the shepherd of his flock? Where is he who set the Holy Spirit among them, who sent his glorious arm of power to be at Moses' right hand, who divided the waters before them to gain for himself everlasting renown, who led them through the depths? Like a horse in the open country, they did not stumble. Like cattle that go down to the plain, they were given rest by the Spirit of the Lord. This is how you guided your people, to make for yourself a glorious name. Look down from heaven and see, from your lofty throne, holy and glorious, where are your zeal and your might? Your tenderness and compassion are withheld from us. But you are our father. Though Abraham does not know us or Israel acknowledge us, you, O Lord, are our father. Our redeemer from of old is your name. This is the word of our Lord. We continue with the psalm of the day. It is Psalm 103. You find this on page 105 in the front part of your hymnal. Let's sing together Psalm 103.
Our reading from the New Testament letters is recorded for us by the Apostle Paul in a letter that he wrote to a group of Christian congregations in the province of Galatia. This is Galatians chapter 4, starting here at verse 1. We'll come back to this word of God for our sermon this morning. Paul writes this. What I am saying is that as long as the heir is a child, he is no different from a slave, although he owns the whole estate. He is subject to guardians and trustees until the time set by his father. So also, when we were children, we were in slavery under the basic principles of the world. But when the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under law that we might receive the full rights of sons. Because you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And since you are a son, God has made you also an heir. This is the word of our Lord. Let's continue with the singing of the verse of the day in song on the middle of page two. Rejoice, be glad, and never fear. The Savior of the world is here. Please stand now for our gospel lesson. The Holy Gospel is recorded for us by Luke. This is in chapter 2, starting here at verse 33. Here, the Lord gives two faithful believers uh, a glimpse of the divine timetable and God's plan of salvation. And uh, we're reminded to, to imitate uh, their faith and their praise of the Lord for that. The lesson appointed here begins at verse 33. I'm going to back up a bit to give the fuller uh, setting of what is taking place here. Uh, I'll back up to verse 25. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was a righteous, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And now I continue at verse 33 where, this, uh, where what's printed in your folder uh, begins. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. 
She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong and was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. This is the word of our Lord. The congregation can be seated as we continue now with the singing of our next hymn. It's hymn number 50, Once in Royal David's City, hymn number 50. Peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ, that child born there in Bethlehem, our Savior and our Redeemer. Amen. As I mentioned earlier, it is our epistle reading from Paul's letter to the Galatian Christians uh, that we especially want to focus on today. This is from Galatians chapter 4. I'm going to reread just the the center verses uh, of this lesson. But when the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under law that we might receive the full rights of sons. This is the word of our Lord. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Oh, Lord Jesus, our gracious Savior, we thank you for for fulfilling all of those prophecies uh, of, of the coming Savior, fulfilling them perfectly for us as our Redeemer and Savior. We ask, Lord, that you would bless us through this word of truth today. Uh, Lord, open our minds and our hearts and our spiritual eyes so that we might see ever more clearly the greatness of your love. We pray this all in your name. Amen. In 
In the name of Jesus, that child born there in Bethlehem, precisely according to God's plan and God's timetable, fellow children of God. Mom always forgot her purse. Every Christmas Eve, every Christmas Eve, as they were gathering us kids together, uh, taking us, hustling us out to the Volkswagen bus to load up to go to Christmas Eve service, Mom always forgot her purse. You know, and of course, we were all kind of nervous because, uh, you know, we had trying to keep in mind the, the Bible verses that we were going to be speaking and the hymns that we were going to be singing. And, and we certainly did not want to be late. But mom always forgot her purse or her gloves or something. And so she would go back into the house and it seemed like it took her forever to find that purse or those gloves. Of course, uh, you know, when we had left the house, you know, the tree was all there, the decorations were there, and the nativity scene and things like that. Uh, but there were no, no gifts under the tree. But then when we came back after the Christmas Eve service, of course, the, those gifts would always be there. But, but mom always forgot her purse. And uh, my wife said her mom always forgot her purse too on Christmas Eve. But yet we, we always got to church on time. We were there in plenty of time and uh, everything just happened uh, uh, an excellent time frame. It all happened uh, according to schedule. And that's a reminder that that timing so often is, is very important. You know, if you're the one that's taking the, the, last check, the last second shot in the basketball game, you know, you're hoping the ball just leaves your hand as the, the buzzer goes off for the end of the game and then it goes swishing through the net for the, the winning points. Or, or if you're you're doing your Christmas baking. You know, you, you want to take those Christmas cookies out of the oven at exactly the right time. You do it too early and they're, they're kind of half-baked and kind of a strange texture and things like that. Or if you leave them in too long, you know, they're all burned crispy on the bottom and they're rock hard. But, but boy, if, you, if it's just the right time, uh, it just makes your mouth water just thinking about it, doesn't it? Timing is so important. And that's what the Apostle Paul is talking to us about, about God's timing, God's perfect timing, as he writes this letter to the Christians in the province of Galatia. And so this morning with the, the carols of Christmas still ringing in our ears and our hearts and our minds, uh, let, let's ask the Lord to focus our hearts on this message of Christmas, which says, at just the right time, Christmas. Well, Paul is using here in, in Galatians chapter four, he's using an illustration that, uh, that brings home the point of God's perfect timing. Now, we don't have the time to go into to all of the details about this. Uh, that'll have to uh, remain for another time. But, but for now, I'd like you just to imagine that you are a child back in Bible times in the land of Israel, maybe during the, the time of the, the reign of King David, about a thousand years before Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Uh, let's say, imagine you're, you're a 10-year-old child. And in fact, you are an only child in your family. And, and your parents are really rather well off. They've been abundantly blessed by the Lord uh, in, in material things as well. And... Uh, the Apostle Paul says, you know, if, if in this kind of situation, uh, he says, you own the whole estate. 
you know, you're, you're an only child and, and mom and dad are, are well off, uh, but you're only 10. You're only 10 years old and, and Paul says you own the whole estate. Well, mom and dad are, are wise parents. And they know that it would not be a good thing for a 10-year-old to, to inherit a, an estate, especially an a, extensive estate, you know, with farmlands and vineyards and livestock and, and servants and all of these things. That would not be a good thing at all for a 10-year-old. And so the Apostle Paul, into this picture, uh, he says that, that the parents stipulate in their will, in this legal document, he says, says, you are subject to guardians and trustees until the time set by your father. So the, the trustees and guardians are the ones who are, are, you know, really in control of things. And, and back in Bible times, those trustees and guardians might even have been servants in the household. But what would they be doing? They would be training this 10-year-old this child and, and teaching that child so that, uh, that that child would mature and grow and, and one day be able to, to handle the estate and take care of the estate and, and run the farm business and, and run it well. But, but not when you're 10 years old. That would have to come sometime later, you know, maybe, maybe when you're 18 years old or maybe when you're 21 years old or, or maybe when you're 35 years old, you know, the parents would stipulate that in the will. But he, Paul says in the meantime, in the meantime, while, while you're still a minor, while you're still a child, he says, you're no different from a slave. Until, until that special designated time comes. Now, all of this is a picture of the Old Testament believers. They were like this, this minor child uh, who was under uh, guardians and trustees. And it, it was a, a picture of the Old Testament believers when they were under the old law covenant with all of the rules and regulations remember how how their lives were were just you know filled with with the rules and regulations especially of the ceremonial laws uh, the the laws about the festivals like the passover that was celebrated each year and and detailed instructions about how to do that and observing the sabbath days and and offering the right sacrifices in the right instances at the right times and things like that even the dietary laws that god required of his his old testament people israel uh, that was like a minor child being under the, the guardianship of trustees. But, but now, now Paul says this, when the time had fully come, God sent his son. You see, at, at precisely the right time, God set in motion the things that were necessary for him to carry out the greatest promise that he had given, the promise of the coming Messiah. And when the time had fully come, when everything was ready, when everything was prepared according to God's plan, when the time had fully come, God sent his son. Just ponder that for a moment. God sent his son. God sent his son, Paul says, born of a woman. Now here's almighty God, the, the, the ruler of the universe, the creator, has now entered into his own creation. He humbled himself to, to take on our humanity, to take on our human flesh. 
So, so we simply need to stop and pause and ponder that marvelous truth, this, this miracle of miracles that the Lord ha- has brought about according to his plan and according to his timetable. At just the right time, Christmas. When the time had fully come. Now, people point to all kinds of different things to to indicate that that this was the perfect time. Of course, this was all in the wisdom of God, and his timing is always perfect. Uh, but, But just a few things maybe come to mind. This was the time of what's often referred to as the Pax Romana, the Roman peace, the Roman Empire uh, dominated the the Mediterranean world and and far beyond that. And while the people of Israel just rebelled against that thought of being under the, the rule of these foreigners, God used even that and and. It was a blessing from God that that it happened right then and God had prepared everything at that exact time in the Roman Empire. You know, it it was really quite easy to travel. Remember who's writing this. This is the Apostle Paul. He had gone on his first missionary journey and had traveled around that province of Galatia and had started uh, numerous, uh, uh, numerous Christian congregations there. You know, if... If there were not one dominant world power at the time and all these different kingdoms and so forth, uh, you know, trying to flex their muscle to show their own power, travel probably would have been a a great deal more difficult. But it wasn't under the, the Roman Empire. You know, they had had a great road system. You could easily, quickly travel, uh, at least according to those those times' standards. You could travel easily from one place to another. There was was pretty much a unified language. Even though people spoke their own native tongue, just about everybody would have known the Greek language. And guess, guess what language it was that the Lord caused the whole New Testament to be written in? This Greek language that was kind of the universal language of the day. All of these things at exactly the right time, according to God's plan. And why, why is that? Why is that? The Apostle Paul says, when the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law. The Hebrew people understood what it was like to be born under law, to be under law. As I said, the the law of God, the ceremonial law that they were, were living in uh, under the, in the Old Testament time, that governed so many aspects of their lives. And, and really, we can say we're still under law uh, or you know, people in general under law that, that we are under God's law. But God is above his law until Jesus was born into this world and was born under law. And he himself submitted to that law for us in order to be our savior, in order to be our redeemer. Our our gospel lesson talked about that. Why were Mary and Joseph uh, there in the temple uh, at that time when Simeon and Anna were there? It was because the law, the law required these things, the the ceremonial law, uh, the the presentation of of Jesus uh, in the temple. Or or think of Jesus' baptism. Why did Jesus go to John and ask John the Baptist to baptize him? Jesus is perfect. Jesus is holy. Jesus did not need to be baptized, not for himself, but he needed to be baptized for us, to be under the law and to fulfill that law perfectly. When John the Baptist kind of objected to the thought of baptizing Jesus, Jesus said, let it be so now to fulfill all righteousness. Jesus is the fulfiller 
of everything that the Lord had, had promised as he placed himself under the law. And all of this, why did he do it? Paul says to redeem those under law, that's the Hebrew people, that's, that's everyone else too, to redeem those under law that we might receive the full rights of sons. And, and not, just, not just a child son, this is a son of age. This is a son who has reached that age that has been determined that, that now he can receive that inheritance of the picture that, that Paul used earlier here. And that's us because Jesus fulfilled the Heavenly Father's will and he fulfilled all of those prophecies perfectly and because he took our sin upon himself and paid for it fully. He paid that ransom price to redeem those who were under the law, Paul says. And we are the redeemed of God. That's us, whether male or female, that we might receive the full rights of sons. And in, in, in Bible times, the, the sons primarily were the ones who received the inheritance. So this is all about the inheritance of our Heavenly Father. And it's all according to God's perfect plan and God's perfect timetable. That we are heirs of eternal life as the dearly loved children of God. Mom always forgot her purse every Christmas Eve. But that time, timing was excellent. And when we came back from church, those, those gifts were always there under the tree. And we made it to church in time in the meantime, and it, it all worked out excellent timing. God's timing is even better. God's timing is perfect. And that's what we rejoice in at this Christmas time. God has fulfilled his promises. In the fullness of time, he sent his son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under law that we might receive the full rights of sons. May we constantly rejoice in that truth. And may we shine out with that message of life and light in our Savior. Amen. Please stand. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. If you would please open your hymnals to page 41, you'll find there the Apostles' Creed. Let's join together in confessing our Christian faith with this creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The congregation may be seated once again. Let's join our hearts in prayer. 
O oh Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your amazing plan of salvation and your perfect timing, how you arranged everything at exactly the right time uh, for Jesus, the eternal Son of God, to come into our world, to take on our flesh, and to be our Savior. Lord, we thank and praise you for that amazing redemption, that that payment of the perfect ransom price uh, that Jesus made for us there uh, by his life of holy obedience and by his innocent suffering and death at the cross. Lord, remind us constantly of, of the victory and triumph of his resurrection as well, all perfectly according to your plan and your timetable. Lord, we ask that you would continue to open your hand of blessing upon us as you guide and direct everything in our lives according to your perfect plan and perfect timing. Lord, bless us richly according to your grace and promise. And Lord, confident of your mercies, we also bring our special petitions before you. And uh, we pray, first of all, for a number of people who have been dealing with health matters, and we ask for your blessings upon them, uh, in including Ron Schmidt, Herb Wegman, Alma Haas, Alan Schmidt, Eric Meyer, Carrie Workentine, who underwent a heart uh, procedure recently, Shirley Dreyer, Gail Krause, Pastor Mark Guthmiller, also my mother, Rita Bader, who underwent surgery recently, and also my older brother, Tim, who uh, underwent surgery this past week. And we also pray for uh, Pastor Tom Raywertz of Aberdeen, uh, who has now been transferred out of the IC, ICU unit uh, to a regular hospital COVID room, uh, remaining hospitalized according to last report. And also Pastor Nathaniel Winkle, who suffered a fractured skull in a, a fall recently and is hospitalized still in Denver at last report. And Lord, we also pray for uh, Charlie Zach, who will be uh, going in for a heart procedure uh, soon as well. Lord, we ask that you would watch over all of these children of yours with your loving care. Lord, remind them constantly that, that your timing is always perfect and that you have a, a perfect plan uh, to bless us. Lord, we ask that you would use even these times of, of difficulty and often pain uh, to, to bring strength uh, to your people, to strengthen their confidence and their faith in you. We also ask that according to your mercies, uh, you would touch them with your healing hand. Lord, we commit them all to your loving care. And Lord, we also uh, pray for the, the family uh, and loved ones of uh, Pastor Lloyd Hebner and also Mrs. Lloyd Hebner uh, Inez, uh, both of whom uh, you called out of this world uh, to yourself uh, in their heavenly home. Uh, we, Lord, we thank you for Pastor Hebner being able to serve for, for many years in the ministry, a number of them here in our Dakota, Montana district, and uh, quite a number of those years at our, our Martin Luther College, uh, Dr. Martin Luther College in New Ulm. Uh, and Lord, we thank you for the, the spiritual rest that they are now enjoying in the kingdom of heaven. Lord, we ask that you would prepare each one of us for that day when we will stand before your throne. Lord, clothe us in the righteousness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Lord, we bring all of these prayers before you with confidence and peace, trusting in your gracious word of truth. We pray this all in Jesus' name, amen. Please stand then as we gather all of our prayers together in the prayer that Jesus himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let's continue then with the sung responses at the top of page 51 in the front of your hymnal. Let us praise the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please be seated then for our closing hymn. And let's join together in singing hymn number 45. Oh, rejoice all Christians loudly. Hymn number 45.
Once again, good morning. Good to be with you here today. Uh, just a couple of things I wanted to, to mention uh, about our schedule, especially our schedule of uh, our TV broadcast on Thursdays. Normally, uh, the seven, uh, excuse me, the 10 o'clock in the morning and seven o'clock in the evening broadcast are the same one. This week, it will be different. So uh, the 10 o'clock in the morning broadcast will be today's service. The seven o'clock in the evening will be uh, our Christmas Eve candlelight service. So uh, we urge you to tune into that and please share that message with others who uh, might want to, to see that uh, be watching in their homes. Um, also, uh, there, I listed in the in the bulletin here in the schedule, a, a possible youth confirmation uh, online uh, class on Wednesday. I, I don't think we are going to do that. We're going to delay that uh, during the Christmas break here. But uh, those are the, the main things I wanted to mention here. So uh, with that, uh, God be with you then and uh, uh, enable you to constantly shine with that, uh, that light of the gospel uh, as we remember God's perfect timing in, in our world and in our lives as well. And uh, while I'm at it, Happy New Year to you as, as well. So uh, God's blessings then.